in this series we're going to be talking about 2D game physics. I'm going to walk you through the major concepts involved in building a 2D physics engine. Um, so recently I built a physics engine that's currently a work in progress. But essentially it's a physics engine that turns your HTML document object model into a, uh, a physics simulation. It turns all your uh, elements into rigid bodies so that they can collide with each other and all of that fun stuff. And one thing I realized while building this thing was that there are kind of two types of tutorials available on the internet. There are tutorials that are very mathematical, which I found that the mathematical models of these physics calculations doesn't always translate well into code. For example, if you're trying to translate an integral into code, um, usually you need to simplify that first. And, and so what, you're, what you really need when you're building a physics engine is simple models in, instead of um, precise calculations on, uh, on how things behave in the real world, unless you're doing anything um, you know, in, industrial or something like that. But for game physics, you need something simple. Those, uh, those models that are based on um, real physics and have a real mathematical basis, they're, they're good to understand, but um, it's very hard to transcribe some of that stuff into code. And then the other type of resource I've found for building 2D physics engines are ones that will talk about specific algorithms. Sometimes they'll even give you code samples, which is nice. But my goal for this series is to package all of those concepts into one place so that you can get them right here. And hopefully this can be a good starting point for you when you're building your own physics engine. But the first bit of advice that I'm going to give you about building a physics engine is don't. If you can, just use one of the many available physics engine that already exists. A really popular one that exists for 2D is called Box2D. And they even have a port of Box2D for JavaScript. Um, I, I attempted to use it a while back and for whatever reason it was running really slow for me. Um, and uh, I, I don't know I don't know why, but um, I, I found that any anytime like I had like a hundred objects that needed to that I needed to you know resolve collisions for and I found that for 100 objects it was quite slow. Uh, maybe I just wasn't using it right. Maybe there were optimizations that I was missing. But Box2D is a popular one. And then if you're using any type of game building framework like uh, Unity or Unreal, you could just use the physics that are built into whatever framework you're using. So you shouldn't have to develop this if you're using one of those big frameworks. But try to use one of these libraries if possible for physics because it makes life a lot simpler. But that being said, there are a few advantages to building your own physics engine. First of all, you have a great deal of customizability on what your phys physics engine does, how it behaves. You can add specific optimizations in that uh, would be very difficult to tweak if you're using someone else's physics engine. You can build a physics engine for any platform and it's just kind of a fun project to take on if you have the time to do it. And, uh, and so I would recommend it if you're experimentative, you have to have um, you know, a decent understanding of um, algebra I don't think you really need to understand physics on a really deep level, but you do need to understand some basic concepts with force, um, inertia, vectors, dot products, and stuff like that. But I'm also going to be trying to keep this video series from getting too deep into the mathematics, because I think that's, uh, that's one thing that you can get elsewhere. And uh, frankly, I, I find that sometimes people get so ingrained in the mathematics that it becomes very difficult to actually understand what's going on. All right, well, let's talk about what the upcoming videos for this series are. So first, I'm going to give some introductory material on how to build a basic game engine core. So this is something that every game developer should know. If you're building a physics-based game, um, you, you need to have a, you know, an, a, a, loop that run, a game loop that runs, updates the physics, updates the, uh, you know, renders the, the graphics, and so on. So I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, and then I'm going to talk about how to detect collisions between access aligned bounding boxes and how to detect collisions between circles. I'm not going to do bounding boxes colliding with circles. That'll be a, a separate video, but circles on circles and access aligned bounding boxes with access aligned uh, bounding boxes. For context, a, uh, an access aligned bounding box is just a box which is aligned with the axis that completely encompasses a polygon or group of polygons. And then I'll uh, just dive right into some of the optimizations you can do with collision detection. Specifically, I'm going to be talking about dynamic um, access-aligned bounding box trees, um, which I'll just call dab trees. 
Now, there are many other optimized collision detection algorithms that are available, and um, I, I'm not sure if I'll talk about them. If you have any specific requests, let me know, and I, maybe I can do a video on it. And now, even though I'm not going to talk much about vectors and explain how they work, uh, I think, you know, if you don't know about vectors and dot products and, and stuff like that, you should uh, find another video to review those topics first because they're going to be integral for understanding uh, some of the, the topics in this video, video series. But um, I'm going to be talking about the support function because it's, it's also um, something that's very important for understanding how we're going to um, accomplish many of the algorithms presented in this series. And it's something that you might not be familiar with if you haven't seen it before. So I'll just talk a little bit about that. And then after that, we can start talking about the separating axis theorem, which is a way of doing collision detection. Um, very simple algorithm, again, to implement and to understand. And then we'll be talking about the GJK algorithm, which also does collision detection, but is extremely difficult to understand. But it's all, it also has some advantages over the, uh, the SAT. And, th and then we want to get into modeling collisions by finding out which direction the collision is happening in and, uh, and what the penetration depth is and things like that. And we can do that using the expanding polytype algorithm. So I'll briefly explain how that works. Um, and then because these GJK algorithms and expanding polytype algorithms are, are kind of difficult to understand, I'll briefly go over a, uh, a much simpler alternative for anyone who wants to, um, to do this that's going to be based on velocity uh, and, and state of your objects. Um, and it avoids having to deal with very heavy or very complex algorithms that are, are very difficult to understand on a, con on a conceptual level. This is just a section on modeling the collisions so that we can resolve them. In the next video, we'll talk about resolving the actual collisions. So for example, colliding objects bouncing off each other, allowing objects to slide or roll across the ground, and, uh, and so on. So next I'll do a short video explaining how to add friction into your simulation. And then we'll talk about aerodynamics, drag, and buoyancy, which are kind of related to friction. Um, these are kind of niche topics. I think most games don't really need to deal with this type of thing. But if, if you are interested in this, then um, uh, that'll be a good video for you to watch. And again, this is all in a 2D context. So I'm not going to be doing 3D. But some of the concepts, I guess, uh, still apply to 3D. But uh, this will be a little different. And then I'll go on to talk about another optimization, which is talking about systems of rigid objects at rest. So this is like dealing with objects that are stacked on top of each other in little islands and you want to optimize the, uh, the, the collision detection algorithm so that you don't have to do a million different collision detections um, uh, every single physics update. So that's pretty much it. If you like this series then subscribe to the channel and if you want to help support the channel I also have a Patreon that you can um, contribute to. Check that out if, if you want to. Um, otherwise subscribe and I hope to see you next time. Bye.